The mixed range of storage was designed by its creator, Mauro Liparini, in accordance with the Italian trend for horizontally constructed furniture. Offering an exceptional degree of flexibility in terms of volumes across a wall, it also affords numerous possible associations of materials and colors. In this film, we shall present to you the essential principles for assembling this range and the various steps in the assembly process. We shall also be giving you some tips which will not only save you time, but also guarantee you success when assembling any mixed composition. Before you begin, try to visualize the piece on the wall in its entirety and make some marks which will give you an idea of the final dimensions of the shelf. The planning grid attached to the box of fittings will provide all the information you will need to assemble this composition, including the colors of the various wall panels to be fitted and the type of aluminum hanging profiles used. Since a single piece of mixed is composed of many elements, it is also important to take time to familiarize yourself with the various items you will have to assemble. The type of wall to which the piece will be attached will determine the kind of screws required. For example, you will need to use hollow wall anchors in the case of plasterboard partitions, while expansion screws will be needed for solid or cellular materials. The first step in the fitting process is to fix in place the first floor level wall panel. To do this, you will need to attach intermediate profiles to the floor level wall panel using the batten wedge. Then place the wall panel against the wall and adjust the height of the jacks to obtain perfect horizontality. This is a fundamental step if the assembly process is to be successful, after which you need only to fix the floor level wall panel to the wall. The type of raw plugs required will depend on the makeup of the wall and are therefore to be selected by the fitting team. When drilling into the wall, it is advisable to vacuum away dust as you go. To fix the first flat wall panel, screw the intermediate profile onto the wall panel at the points indicated, then set it into the profile you attached previously. You then need to attach the shelf. To do this, insert the stem posts into the wall panel, tighten the screws, then slot the shelf into place. This means that there will be no screws visible on the unit, which is of course aesthetically desirable. Then fix everything into place using four conformat screws and screw the intermediate profiles into place. Important! In the very specific case of this composition, you will need to attach two intermediate profiles rather than three, since there will be a chest with door fixed above. You will then need to assimilate the wall panel and shelf into the rest of the composition. Each stage of the fitting process, check that everything really is flush and that there is no gap between the wall panels. Depending on the wall, you will sometimes need to make adjustments using thin wedges of wood or bits of veneer. For the left-hand shelf, make sure you take measurements before fitting a hanging bracket to ensure that the wall panels sit flush. Think about locating the bracket 8 centimeters to the left of the edge so that it fits exactly into the grooves on the wall panel which takes the shelf. Then screw the panels into the wall. Using the same technique, slot in the next two shelves. Don't forget that you will need to complete the piece by fitting a finished profile to the upper shelf. To fit the chest with flap door, first fix an initial wall panel fitted with metal stems, then slot in a second 380 mm wall panel equipped with traction studs, which you will have assembled beforehand. Insert the traction housings into the upper shelf, then slot the chest onto the metal stems and dowels. Screw the traction housings into the upper shelf to hold everything together. The chest is mounted directly onto the wall in classic fashion, rather than onto a wall panel. Next, align the sideboard with the floor level wall panel. Vertical separations are then added to the shelves in the prescribed positions. You may find it easier to use an angled screwdriver for this. 
Once separations are in place, add the magnetic finishing covers to the chests to mask any visible screws. Before you begin, discuss the matter of cabling with the customer and try to anticipate possible problems to avoid any nasty surprises once the unit has been assembled. The assembly procedure for this composition is broadly similar to the one previously described. What makes this composition different, however, is the sliding doors and system of floor-level chests. To install the sliding door, you must first attach a plastic slide block, plot the half-width of the shelf, then use the template supplied, placing this against the front edge of the shelf. Then drill a 12 mm deep hole using a number 8 drill bit. Then fix the plastic slide block onto the lower shelf. On the upper shelf, you will first need to fix the sliding rollers, the stops and the finishing covers in the slide rails. Insert the slide block into the groove in the door and then clip the door onto the two rollers. You can use the adjusting knobs to adjust the height of the door with a view to controlling the play at the bottom and ensuring the door slides smoothly. To set the chests upon the ground, first put the bases into position and adjust their height using the jacks. The bottoms of the bases must be aligned with the bottoms of the floor level wall panels. Then position the chests against the wall panel and on the wooden guide dowels. Then affix the 2400 mm top onto the two right hand chests. Put the door in place by engaging it with the lower block then clipping the upper roller assembly onto the rear of the door. The lower set can be adjusted via the upper roller assembly. Important. Certain mixed compositions are offered with a system of linking struts holding the wall panels together. The whole thing then can be fixed to the wall by just one upper finishing rail, thus considerably reducing the number of screws required and of course the number of holes in the wall. 